Hey y'all, it's Laura, and I thought we'd go over some organizing tips and tricks today, specifically organizing photos. So I'm gonna show you first how I organize my digital photos, so how I get them off of my phone, and where do I put them in my computer? How do I keep track of everything? And then I'm gonna show you my process for printing and organizing my photos to scrap, because I have a very detailed system <laughs> <laughs> it's not a long system, but it is something that I use specifically to help me scrap more and to make scrapping quick and easy for myself so I'm not just digging through tons and tons of photos with no idea what goes with what, missing photos, double scrapping photos. I want to make sure that I have a system that works so when I sit down to scrap, I can pull out some photos, match it to some papers, and bam, we've got a scrapbook page. So this makes the system a lot easier for me so I'll start with the digital and show you how I organize that and then we'll go through the rest of the process to the small basket of photos that I keep on my desk and how I keep up with the many years <laughs> I am behind. So I'm currently scrapping 2018, it is now 2021 and I do tend to be about three years behind but with this system I have been slowly catching up and doing about two years per year and scrapping roughly 250 to 300 layouts per year. Now I am an avid scrapper and I do have the time to scrap because I am a stay at home mom and most of my kids are in school. I only homeschool one of them. So if you don't have that kind of time, that's okay. This process is something that I do the digital stuff once a month, the printing twice a year. And I do one big print, organize everything, and I'm good for about six months of scrapping, which is really, really helpful for me. Now, if you would like to see a video on how I print at home using my Canon selfie and Epson Picture Mate, please let me know in the comments below. I'm more than happy to do a video about that as well. So let's dive in and start with our digital photos. So here is how I save and organize my photos digitally. I have a My Pictures folder that is on a hard drive, an external hard drive, so it doesn't slow down my computer. And then I have my uh, folders separated by year, and then a few special projects down here at the bottom. So let me just open up a year to show you kind of my uh, style within each folder. So I have every single month in here. Now this was Olivia and Sophia's first year of life, 2014, 2013 to 2014. And I had a lot of photos of them. And so instead of having to dig through these to do their albums, I created a special folder that documented up to their first year. After that, they got incorporated with the rest of my photos, but this is the way that it works through all of the years. Uh, 2008 is when I got married in August. So within, each of the folders. I'll have smaller folders focused on events and holidays, things of that nature that help me to organize my photos. For example, Christmas photos are separate from everyday photos. And this just helps me to quickly find the photos that I want. And when I sit down to plan out a full year album, which I will show you in just a moment how I do that, I can simply open up a year, start in January, and pick out the photos that I want to print and scrapbook for that month. I don't print every photo, I uh, just pick out the ones that I really like. But this is the way that I organize them inside of my computer, and uh, it just makes them very easy to find. Now for a while I did put my kids' scouts separate and the dogs separate. I've kind of brought that back just because it was helping me find exactly what I wanted here. Scouts was separate and so different events that they went to made it easier for me to find them quickly because those were a separate album for each of my kids. So let's go over to the desk and I'll show you how I set up my albums and plan them and then print the photos that I need to make them. Okay, so how I plan out an album is to go through each of my photos. As I showed you, I had them by month in my computer. And so I will create ideas for pages. And that helps me decide which photos to print and which photos not to print. What are the stories that I really wanna tell from the year? And I break those down into actual pages. So for 2018, I have a family title page. I had, uh, I wanted to document the snow. I had a couple of 
monthly Project Life pages and uh, working on pictures of the dogs, uh, meeting Sarah Jane, which is my niece, because that was when she was born in 2018. And just being very specific on the type of pages that I want to create. And this helps me figure out A, how many albums I'm gonna need, how many photos I'm going to need, and the type of themes I'm going to be working with for the year. I check them off when they're done, and it also allows me to put just the right amount of page protectors in the albums so that I can just go ahead and easily put them away quickly when they are done. I know exactly what order they're going to be in. So this plan I have found extremely helpful. I kind of guess how many photos to use. It really depends in this planning process uh, how many photos I feel like I have to use to tell the story. Sometimes that's just one. There's one really poignant, important photo that tells the story. Sometimes I need two or three. Not often do I need more than that, but if I'm gonna use more than four photos, I'm likely going to do a pocket page. So down here, you'll see I have some scrap gals. I went to one of their retreats and I did a pocket page for that one. First day of school, I had a lot of photos, so I did a pocket page for that one. But if I'm gonna do four or less photos, I can usually get that onto a one page layout. Now, once I have my plan, I do go ahead and print out my photos. This is the little basket that I use. It's just perfectly sized. I got it from the craft store. And what I do when I print my photos is when they come in, I section them into groups. So for example, I have this photo. This has four two by three photos on it. And I create this in uh, Picasa on my computer. That is a uh, editing software that you can get and there's a lot of different options out there. You can use uh, several of them. You can use Project Life app on your phone. If you just have your photos on your phone already, that might be easier before you send them to print. And then you just print this as a regular four by six, which is way cheaper than trying to print three by fours or smaller photos like uh, wallet size, which are more expensive. So this way I only pay for a four by six, but I've gotten four two by three photos. On the back, I put the general theme of what I wanted to scrap. Usually it matches up with the page I've written down here so that I know exactly which one I'm working on. I put the size of the layout I want to make because I do scrap in a couple of different sizes. How many photos are included on this page? In this case, four. And the date of the photos. And so all of that information is included on this one little post-it. And that helps me if I just pull this out, oh, these colors match the kit I'm working with perfectly. I'm gonna go ahead and dive into this one. This tells me everything I need to know. I don't have to go look up anything else. This is exactly what I need. So I will pull this off, put it on my desk, and when the layout's done, then I can go ahead and mark it with the date and go ahead and put it away. So that system for me works really well. Now, if I'm looking for, let's say a pocket page, that's gonna have a lot of photos to it. So let's, let me find one here. Here's one. So these photos go to a pocket page. So there's quite a few photos here. I haven't put a post-it on every single one of them. I just don't really feel that's necessary. So what I do, again, I tell myself it's a pocket page. There are six photos and it's from June, 2018. And so I know when I'm flipping through to make sure I have all the photos for this page, I better have six. So I do, I have two, on, two three by fours here. Again, I made that in a collage in Picasa and before I printed it out. So that is how I make sure that I have plenty of photos to scrap. And when this starts getting low, which this, uh, it's doing okay at the moment, but when this starts getting low, I go ahead and plan out the next year or go print out some for my kids' albums because they have individual albums of their own as well and just restock my photos. I don't worry too much about, oh, I have to finish this year before I start the next year. I don't worry about that too much. I generally have uh, every few months, I'll come and see what's left and just start working through what's left and uh, try to finish it up when I feel super motivated. But I get much more motivated by the actual pictures themselves and how they fit in with whatever kit that I am using. Using this system has helped me to be very productive in my scrapbooking. Uh, I'm not having to go print 
a photo. Oh, I need this. Oh, I need this. Oh, I need that. Everything is all ready to go for me and I can literally just flip through and see what colors and themes match the kit I'm using. And I'm not scurrying all over my craft room trying to find the perfect collection for each photo. I like to work with kits. It just helps me to limit my options and get a lot of things done. This is how I managed to get around 20 to 30 layouts scrapped per month. And for me, that's extremely helpful. I like to just be able to dive right in and not have to do a bunch of prep work before I start a page. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments below. If there's any other videos you would really like to see, I'm more than happy to share. Thanks for joining me guys. I hope this was helpful. Until next time, bye.